Hello everyone, Heinlein here and welcome back to my channel. In this tutorial we will go through how to make an ILS landing in the Mirage F1. ILS of course stands for Instrument Landing System and it is something that you use when it's really bad visibility like today when it's uh, quite a storm going on. We are going to land on Al Minad right here. I initially planned to do this on Bandar Abbas but for some reason the ILS system doesn't work there and I don't know why. I guess it's a bug. But it works, works perfectly well on Al Minad, so let's uh, do it here. Before making uh, an ILS system, there's a couple of things you need to know. You need to know the altitude of the air airfield, 176 feet, as you can see on the top uh, left corner. You need to know the Tacan station, which you can see right here, and you can see it here. And you need to know the ILS frequency. We are landing on runway 09. Yeah, from here and that is one one zero decimal seven zero so that's just uh, on pause here I have it in active pause so it doesn't matter and let's uh, set up our aircraft first off let's turn on, off our radar it's a bit annoying like so and let's set our attack and frequency and make sure this one is at TR and let's set this one to one one zero decimal seven zero like so and set this one to ILS like so and set this one to VT now the big needle points to the Tacan station at this point since it's so easy we can actually just fly straight ahead until we are at uh, 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 this needle points to zero nine zero and we will intercept the runway but we are going to draw a program in our interception point for our glide uh, for our uh, final in the navigation computer. As you know, the opposite of 090 is uh, 270. So at 10 miles, we are going to end up roughly here before uh, we turn in for our final. However, this map has uh, a uh, two uh, degree uh, eastern deviation. And uh, of course, uh, west is best and east is least, so uh, that is minus two. And it also says so. So let's uh, uh, put in 268. So, and right click this one, right above the button, or I mean the switch. Let's program in our distance. There we go, and let's pull up the, this one to to the right. Now the big needle uh, points to our interception point. Vector additional, I think it uh, is, I don't know, so, uh, no French. Now let's uh, on pause and let's get going. Oh, I how rude of me, I forgot to go to the different key bindings we are going to use. We of course are going to use our flaps, our uh, landing gear of course. Duh. And we are going to use our autopilot uh, disengage uh, lever or, or and disconnect trigger. It's uh, really easy to uh, uh, confuse these two. You can bind the autopilot G and the R button, but uh, I don't really find it necessary. So let's uh, unpause and let's get going. When descending, let's uh, turn on uh, some more lights, Navi landing lights and our navigation lights, and pay close attention to the altitude, vertical speed, and our direction, and of course our speed indication indicator. Let's level out. Oops. So. Now I like to decrease my speed to roughly 250 and deploy my, uh, or uh, 220 I believe, I mean, and uh, deploy my flaps so we can trim out our aircraft. It makes uh, going in for a final a lot easier. Okay, we're getting quite a lot of nose authority, so uh, I mean uh, angle, so let's uh, put up our flaps to full. And you can see. Uh, started climbing quite a bit and 
And let's try to keep our speed at roughly 200. Make sure to trim the aircraft. Always trim. And I like to trim it to roughly 10 degrees uh, of uh, nose angle. Six miles and our uh, uh, horizontal localizer is uh, showing up. Now just waiting for the glide path in, uh, indicator. Oh, let's trim it up a bit. Five miles. Four miles, let's lower our landing gear. That's quite draggy, so it's nice to have it trimmed out. There we go. Three miles. Can't see the ground. Alright, let's pause here. <clears throat> now we are two miles. And now our uh, glide slope indicator showed up. We are pretty much on altitude, a little bit above actually. And uh, we are a bit uh, too much to the left of the, of the path. Uh, we're going to turn left in roughly one and a half mile. You should always do it a little bit before you reach zero. So pause. Alright, let's flip it over like so, and let's start to make our turn. Pull back on the stick, and increase throttle. There, our horizontal localizer comes in. All right, let's keep it. Let's turn a little bit more to the right, so we get. Let's just pause here. At this point, we have quite a lot of things to think about. Our, we need to think about our nose uh, angle, our airspeed, our altitude, and our glide paths. So. You need to scan the instruments all the time at this point. It quite, takes quite a lot of skill. I had to practice this for actually a couple of days before I made this tutorial. Let's press the autopilot the disconnect trigger and A. Let's turn it on and press R. But now we are pretty much above our glide path. So we need to descend. Yeah, we are getting a bit too much nose authority. We need to de descend more. I mean, uh, increase our speed actually, but we need to descend. Okay, seems like we're intercepting the light path. Right, quite good. You can press G, of course, uh, and uh, it will lock itself to the glide slope. But in my experience, uh, it uh, has a bad habit uh, of actually. Uh, turning off the autopilot in its entirety, so I prefer to keep it in manual, actually, this part. So, need to let, let's get down a bit. And I'm going to show you a little trick that I learned just a few days ago. I forgot to show it uh, to you. That is the Sight Selector APP switch. I have bound to my HOTAS, and when I flip it, this happens. What this one shows, it uh, this one shows the direction that my aircraft is heading in. Right now we're uh, coming in a little, bit, a little bit too short. This one takes, do, does not take into account wind. As you can see we have quite a uh, good amount of side wind. 
but it helps uh, quite a lot when uh, you want to land. Let's unpause again. Increase the speed. There we go. Right now I'm only trimming the aircraft. I'm not uh, pulling the stick at all. At this point, press the autopilot disengage because of the side wind. And now we're flying it manually. When it's such a high side wind, you should land the aircraft manually or you might flip over when you land. Okay, a little bit rudder to the left now. Let's deploy our chutes. Flaps in. Alright, let's get rid of the chutes. Turn on our high sensitivity nose wheel steering. turn off that noise. So guys, uh, just uh, before we finish, as I said, you can use the glide slot button, but uh, the thing is you need to have everything completely perfect or you run a risk that uh, the autopilot and everything will just simply disengage and at that point you might do a go around because you will uh, most certainly almost lose control of your aircraft. However, I do recommend that you pr press uh, the localizer mode switch, the R, right here and that is because it really alleviates you of a lot of tasks you only need to uh, concern you about your altitude and your uh, nose uh, angle and just uh, like when you do a uh, VFR landing you do the final at roughly 10, uh, 10 degrees and you flare out and land the aircraft between uh, 13 and 15 degrees so guys that is it for this video uh, I know it's quite uh, the task actually to do an ILS landing uh, in uh, this aircraft. I took a long time to actually learn this myself, but I hope you were able to take something uh, from this. Thank you all for watching, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.